Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Sienna here with a brand new video. Today we're looking at your 2025 predictions. Now, Spirit doesn't want to spoil all the surprises and like all of the stuff that you're supposed to just kind of find out as we go along through the coming year. However, we are gonna get a look at three different predictions for each group. And I'm gonna leave it up to Spirit what kind of category the predictions fall under. So whatever comes up here comes up and we're gonna trust that it's the message and the predictions that are meant for you. So yeah, the way we're gonna do this, we got pile one or group one, pile two, group two, pile three, group three. Pile one is the pyrite. If I can get my camera to focus on that, it's very pretty, very shiny, very sparkly. Pile two is the amethyst. And pile three is this shiny white rock. I'm assuming some kind of quartz that I found on the ground not very long ago, <laughs> but it's pretty. So we're including it in our videos. Oop. We're gonna jump to the appropriate timestamp. Of course, you're gonna find that in the description and in a pinned comment. Today, we're using the One World Tarot. You will find uh, a link to that in the description as well. We're also going to be using the Moonology Oracle and the Ask and It Is Given deck. And if you like the bracelets I'm wearing today, you'll find a link in the description where you can find those and even more than that. So anyway, we're going to jump right into this. Okay, pile one, group one. If you selected the pyrite, then this is your reading. These are your predictions. I'm going to just go ahead and put this over here we're gonna get shuffled and then we will begin okay so what are pile one group one's predictions whoa is my whole deck upside down oh it is okay so what are pile one, group one's predictions? I'm gonna take a moment to shuffle. Okay, here we go. And then, yeah, let's get a look at that. And I, I guess we're gonna do what we always do, <laughs> at least on this channel. And we're gonna start with the tarot cards. And then after the tarot cards, we will jump into the Oracle. Okay. High Priestess, Four of Wands. Line one is going to be like the first prediction. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put some cards down for the first prediction. Then I think we're going to do like put them back and then do the second one. Yeah, you know what? That's going to work a lot better. We're going to have more room on the table to work with that way. Okay. High Priestess, Four of Wands, Temperance. I'm going to just move this down so that the camera glare isn't quite so intense. But I think you can still see the artwork here. I will be holding up the cards a little bit closer. So this is prediction number one. For group one, pile one. Okay, this is fascinating. This is actually not at all what I was expecting to get right off the bat here. Okay, High Priestess. She is about um, secrets and information that's been concealed and information that, well, yeah, that's that's been hidden. It's uh, not always a bad thing, though. There could be some kind of hidden wisdom or hidden knowledge here. Four of Wands, I'm seeing here with the High Priestess and the Four of Wands together. In uh, 2025, for a lot of you in Group 1, you're going to be uncovering some type of, I think it's some type of like family secret or uh, gaining, earning, gaining. I'm trying to say words, two words at the same time and it's not coming out right. You're going to be gaining some kind of really really smart, I'm hearing like sage advice uh, from somebody within your family. Now, this uh, sage advice, I feel like it goes way back, like great grandparent, that, that kind of, that far back. And it's something that you weren't 
really taught, um, let's just use an example here. Perhaps your, your great grandma, whether you knew her or not, isn't totally relevant in this case, but um, had some really, really profound wisdom and was really smart, had some great ideas, but you're not really, you didn't really learn about any of that or you didn't learn about that side of her until now, until um, like what's coming here in the near future, 2025. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting for some, for some of you where you're getting this like old family wisdom, family advice. Uh, but I'm also seeing not just advice. I think for, uh, others of you who've chosen this pile, there is some kind of a family secret and you know, it could be good. It, it could be bad, <laughs> but what the main point here is, is now temperance. You have, you've learned this secret or this knowledge or this, you know, old, almost forgotten sage advice. And it's going to be very useful to you for your healing journey. Now, for those of you where it's a family secret and maybe it was something that was not very good, that there was a reason why they kept it hidden for these generations and stuff learning it and uncovering it is going to be good for, I'm seeing like family healing as well, not just your individual healing, but healing of your family, getting something about your lineage, like you're, you're healing your family line. There's something that goes way back. You know what? Let's do another, just another tarot card and get more information here on this like family secret, this thing that you're just learning about a family member or it could be multiple. Mm. Yeah, Spirit is telling me I'm gonna have to break this down into a couple of like examples or subgroups. Anyway. Okay, Spirit, which example should I start with first then? Okay, sage advice. Okay, so this is like where there's not maybe hidden family drama or anything that's trying to be suppressed. This is just for those of you who resonate with the getting sage advice uh, um, reading here or message, that's what I'm looking for, the <laughs> sage advice message. Okay, let's see. Ooh, okay. Somebody, we got this magician here and I'm feeling as though we had somebody or you had, we had, maybe, maybe I also had, but I don't know. Um, yeah, you had somebody way back in your family who did have some kind of um, like a, a, a magic spiritual type of connection. So somebody could have literally here with the magician, like could have been practicing some kind of um, witchcraft or some kind of other uh, spiritual practice like that. I'm seeing something about manifestation where that was something that this uh, family member from the past did take part in. Two of swords, but they didn't really, I'm not going to say they didn't put it into practice because they did, but they didn't um, tell anybody that that's what they were doing. Yeah, you had someone in your family like way back that actually was quite psychic too. And they didn't really tell anyone. And I can understand this depending on where you're from and which culture you're from. Um, some communities were maybe quite religious and did not appreciate uh, alternative types of spiritual communication or divination. So I can see maybe that being one reason why this family member didn't really say anything or maybe just everyone else around them was quite skeptical. Anyway, yeah, they, they sort of kept it hidden. I think they were very selective with maybe who they, who they told or who they shared their insights with. Mm. And then, you know, someone's like, oh, how did you know that? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I just, I, it just kind of popped up. I don't know. I just kind of know it where actually this person, they, they did know a hundred percent well, and they may not have admitted this part out loud. Well, you know what? It came to me in a dream or like, well, I actually saw it in my tarot cards or in my tea leaves or, um, anyway, now it's like, you're getting your hands on this information and you're, you're left with a choice. Like, do you want to maybe learn and i think the reason it's being revealed to you is because spirit wants to give you the opportunity to learn whatever these skills are so it's like do you want to learn 
the magic practice? Do you want to learn tarot or witchcraft or tea leaves or, you know, whatever it is? Or astrology, I'm picking that up. Some of you may have had family members who were astrologers, um, maybe drew up like natal charts and, and other stuff like that. It's like, do you want to learn these things and sort of carry on where this uh, ancestor, whoever left off? Or do you want to just sort of, nah, no thanks, I'm good, sort of close it off and reject it. So you are left with that choice there. Now, the other example is, um, or the other group that Spirit wants me to get into is the message where you are learning some kind of a family secret. And it may not be... Uh, it may not be great because it, here we have the healing, right? So if everything, you know, was fine and the family secret was maybe just a recipe or something, then there would not really be much need for uh, healing or incorporating something like that into your healing practice. However, we have here, yeah, okay, yeah, for those of you that are going to be stumbling upon some kind of like hidden, uh, something that the generations back hid you know, so that they were hoping that the future generations wouldn't know about X, Y, and Z that happened in 1952 or, you know, whatever. Um, it, it might be a little bit shocking. I don't see, though, any, like, devil or tower or anything. It's something that happened long enough ago that it doesn't, it won't actually upturn or disrupt your daily life. Um, and it's not really going to disrupt, like, your daily peace. However, there again, with the something about healing the family line and healing the lineage, there is something here about there's like some kind of energy cleansing that needs to be done. So, okay, Spirit's just giving me another example, and this won't apply to everybody, but if it does resonate with you, then good. Uh, but I'm seeing an old house, and perhaps it did belong to, maybe it belonged to a grandparent or someone... And they've recently maybe had to vacate the house. Maybe they passed away. Maybe they moved. Um, and so the house is empty. I'm seeing like in the past, maybe something really bad happened in that house. And for some reason, that energy still lingers. I'm seeing with this temperance, this healing, like going in and doing some kind of energy cleansing practice or uh, depending on your particular spiritual path and what works for you. Um, there, I'm also seeing like praying over the the home or the property or the family and then I'm also seeing something about going back even further and it has to do with this high priestess with the um like the the spiritual the hidden knowledge the anyway your higher self may be feeling guided um to do a more intensive type of healing practice for your your family line so that is something you might want to look into further, uh, a practice that could be very beneficial to, you know, your, you or your family member or your family line. All right. Okay, so we're going to actually put these all back in the deck and we're going to look at your second prediction for group one, pile one. So yeah, that first one was really interesting, getting some kind of um, advice uncovering some kind of old advice from a past family member that could help you where you're at right now or uncovering some kind of a secret or family history that uh, now that you know it, maybe a few things make sense now and Spirit is encouraging you to move forward with trying to heal that family line. Okay, for our second uh, prediction here, okay, we got Page of Wands that fell out. Ooh, I like this. Right away, what I'm getting with this page of wands is you're about to be heard. Like your voice is going to be heard. Somebody, oh yeah, okay. Somebody's going to take you seriously. You're going to speak up. Hmm. Yeah, you're sharing your experience with them, something or you're speaking up about something. And it's something that has caused like a lot of suffering or it's caused you a lot of anxiety or, or just pain otherwise. And perhaps in the past, you've tried talking about it and have been ignored or invalidated or, you know, just people didn't really seem to understand. I'm just trying to get the light glare to be not so bad, but we might have to just bear with with this one. At least you can still see where it says which card it is here. 
And then we have uh, Queen of Pentacles, maybe as a result of sharing whatever your your truth or whatever your situation was and then being taken seriously. Uh, Queen of Pentacles, I'm seeing like a stronger, I think a stronger sense of your self-worth. Now the gender on this card is not really important. It's just the energy here. Um, but you're like, okay, see, I knew what was, I knew that there was something here. Or I knew I deserved help with this. Or I, I, I knew there was something I could do about this. I'm um, just hearing from spirit. Somebody might be saying, I knew I wasn't crazy. So yeah, just building on that more stable sense of self-worth, perhaps your sense of self in general. And then I'm also getting with Queen of Pentacles that some of you are going to start seeing a very good therapist or some other type of expert um, that can help you with whatever caused this situation. I um, First, I'm seeing a really, really good therapist. Now, again, with the gender, not necessarily important. However, you could be very well matched up uh, with a woman. And I'm seeing like you have a strong, you'll have a strong rapport with her or him. But I think just for the sake of simplicity here, I'm just going to refer to this person as uh, she, her. Yeah, I think you're going to have a very strong rapport with her. And when you have a, a really good therapist that makes you feel understood and has really good, um, you know, advice for you or has a really good alternate perspective to offer to you or whatever, um, it it can, it can really can the word bolster <laughs> really bolster your healing process and make you a, a much stronger person learning the perhaps there are some skills maybe that you need some coping skills or some other type of like healing skills or something that you need that you're about to be shown and it's just going to i'm getting something about mental fortitude and i'm just seeing the image of like a building or something being reinforced or like, um, yeah, that's what I am seeing. It's, it's like, a, I'm seeing like a brick building where it's old and it's crumbling a little bit, but I'm seeing it being re reinforced and rebuilt in some spots. So, okay. Let's see if we can get just a little bit more information on that. Okay. Well, now for some of you who may not go the therapy route, if that doesn't resonate with you, or that's just something you um, maybe just don't have available or don't have access to right now, I do still see some access. Like you will be getting some kind of an opportunity to see a professional. However, one thing I'm seeing here with this emperor is that you could, uh, for those of you who have like a very, very good relationship with your dad, because emperor is dad slash husband, and I'm getting dad energy here. So um, your dad could be somebody that's very significant to you. You know what? This could even tie into that prediction number one, even. Maybe it's your dad that lets you in on this like family secret or something and kind of is somebody good to talk to about it. Again, it doesn't have to be linked to the first prediction, but it can be. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing that he could be a very trustworthy and very uh, wise source of help or advice here. Strength, again, like uh, something about like encouragement, like for those of you with, uh, who, who uh, resonate with this message of having like a very good relationship with your dad that you... You trust him, you're able to tell him everything. A dad or a father figure, it doesn't have to be like your biological or step parent or adoptive. Like it can be, you know, your chosen family as well. But I have here, yeah, strength and encouragement. He's just, he's going to be a really good influence for you during this time. Perhaps he could be the one who's encouraging you to go to therapy even, or help you to find a therapist or help you. There's something, something about that. Maybe he could be helping you to pay for a session or something. Um, but I really love seeing that for those of you, again, who that re who resonate with that message. Okay. 
And then Spirit wants me to, you know, kind of give one more example, maybe for those of you who don't get along with your parents and don't have a good connection. Perhaps you'll be talking about some of these issues that you have with, you know, your, your dad or your mom or, you know, some kind of a father figure or parental figure. And once you, you know, maybe get to the root of some of these things or, and the root of, you know, maybe you're feeling anxious or stressed or something now and your therapist maybe helps you to go back further within your memories and kind of pinpoint maybe when you started feeling this way or what the triggers were, or what the situation was. It's going to really help with your healing. So I love seeing that. Some of you, and I just, I love this message of being able to share and being believed. I'm getting something about public forum. I guess this is like another just example here from Spirit. Maybe you're able to share your story online and other people are like, whoa, I actually just went through that same thing. Or like, whoa, I had the same kind of upbringing or I had that same experience in college or high school or, you know, at X, Y, and Z job. Wow, like I feel seen. And then people being like, hey, I believe you. I, I'm here to support you and, and to validate you. And, you know, perhaps maybe you make a YouTube video or something like that and it somehow like goes viral or it gets a bunch of views or you get a lot of really good ad revenue or something on it. Because I'm seeing here again with the stability could maybe bring in some like, a you know, some financial stability. Maybe that's what like is the push that gets you started on making a channel or a podcast talking about a certain thing. And there's something very, maybe very therapeutic about it again. I still would encourage you to maybe go see a professional therapist, but I encourage therapy for everybody. So, all right. So that was our second prediction. We're going to put these back. We're going to look at the third, pre oop, the third prediction for our pile one, group one. These three fell out and Spirit's like, no, nah, no, nah, just, just leave them. Just leave them. Okay. There's this uh, energy I have of like finding joy after a heartbreak, after a sorrow. Where maybe 2024, that it could have been... 2024 could have been really hard for you guys who've uh, picked this pile because I'm seeing here like a missed opportunity or something just not panning out. And then I'm seeing here with the three of swords, like there's, that is like the heartbreak, the depression, the, the sadness, the shock, the grief, perhaps maybe you lost someone that was important to you. And who knows, maybe this could all tie back into that very first prediction. Maybe a family member that you lost, maybe you are going through their things and you come across like maybe a notebook or a journal and they write down some, they've written down something that really hits you hard and is like, wow, that's the message I needed right now or something like that. But I, I do see, um, you, you cry it out, but I also am picking up that, uh, you've cried enough that Perhaps that's how you feel like, oh, I've cried enough. I just want to feel better. I'm over this. Like, I just want to be done being sad. I just want to be done grieving, blah, blah, blah. And if we want to go uh, use the minor arcana for timing, it's something that you've been really struggling with over the previous five months. It is November as of uh, recording day, so whatever was five months back, June? Yeah, maybe something happened in, in June or something like that. Again, this is, it's, that's a very specific message, but if that resonates with you, of course, either way, something you've been sad and suffering with for a long time. Yeah, there's finally joy. And I have the mental image of a light turning on in a, in a very dark room. It's, I'm just seeing like this room, it's dark, it's cold. Somebody finally comes in and turns on the light. They turn on the heat or they open the vent or something so that it's, there's finally like some warm air flowing. And I'm seeing like a water here. 
Um, but also with like this air flowing, like I'm just getting this, like it's a symbol or something for like life flowing. So it's almost like maybe your life felt like it was on standstill because of what happened. And then you, now, you know, coming in 2025, it's like, okay, I can breathe again. I can move again. I like, you're going to start feeling alive again. And, uh, you know, maybe going into prediction number two, maybe going to therapy or something like that is going to help sort of jumpstart this process. But I do see like good emotions, like comfortable, joyful emotions ahead for 2025. I love that for you. Now we're going to do a immunology card just for any extra uh, advice. And this is just any, any extra advice or any extra uh, information about 2025 that maybe has to do with your predictions or if spirit has something entirely different they want to say we will just let them we'll let them do that a personal issue reaches resolution I think that is fantastic news a personal issue reaches resolution perhaps you maybe get some closure on something that happened in the past and maybe you find that through therapy maybe you find that through if you choose to maybe go about it, um like in prediction number two there choose to maybe like post about your experiences or start a channel or a podcast or whatever go processing this through your creative means or through the means of a professional therapist or a loved one that you trust yeah, there's closure here. Full moon in Cancer. Now, I'm not an astrologer, but perhaps Cancer season, I think that's July, perhaps that is when you really start to feel better. And throughout, in the months leading up to that, you're working through your stuff. You're perhaps like going to therapy and you're working through things there or you're working things out, you know, through these other means. But, you know, maybe when it is, July and you know full moon that time that could be something significant to you um seeing something about like moon magic where perhaps some of you already know about it and it could tie into that first prediction where um maybe the family secret or whatever was somebody that had a witchcraft or magic practice maybe they have notes or something on moon magic or um that was they used the phases of the moon or something like that to help with their manifestation so full moon, that could be important to you. Yeah, cancer season July could be important to you. Maybe that's when you make like the huge breakthrough. Maybe by July, maybe there's something that triggers you now that by the time July 2025 comes, it may not be a trigger anymore or it may be less of a problem or less of a trigger. There's just something about feeling free and feeling like, oh, I can breathe again, thank God. Now we're gonna go into the ask and it is given cards so let's get some extra advice for your 2025 now there's printing on both sides of the cards so my agreement with spirit is that we pull from the middle and you know whatever ends up in the middle that is the message for you I don't really look while I'm shuffling these I'm kind of over here eyeing up my coffee cup that I will definitely drink from in a minute here oh whoa Okay, you know what? Three fell out and we're gonna keep them. I guess Spirit really, really, really wants to share all three of these. Okay, so the first one, I'm a vibrational transmitter and receiver. In every moment, you are broadcasting a very specific vibrational signal that is instantly being understood and answered. And immediately your present and future circumstances begin changing in response to the signal you are projecting. The entire universe right now is being affected by what you are offering. Okay. Perhaps you're becoming like a clearer channel for, for spirit. Maybe that's something you're going to start learning to do is channeling or um, like receiving psychic communications or, or something like that. The next one we have is all that is, is benefiting from my existence. No matter what has caused your unique point of view to come about, it has come about. So no matter 
you know, your circumstances surrounding your, your conception, your birth, whatever, uh, whatever <laughs> surrounding you being, you know, placed here on earth, you're here. You do exist. You are thinking, you are perceiving, you are asking, and you are being answered. And all that is now in this deck, they call it all that is, but you could also call it God or source or universe or life is benefiting from your existence and from your point of view. Maybe you're really suffering with like feelings, you know, like with your self-worth and, and feeling really, really bad about yourself or feeling like you're fundamentally like broken or useless or something on some level. And spirits here saying, no, 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 I need you. First of all, something else I'm picking up from spirit, this is going to be a channeled thing coming up. So um, spirit saying, I need you. Not only do I need you, I am you. I learn from your experience. You learn from my benefit, from my influence. You learn for my benefit and from my influence. Okay, which, interesting. I wasn't expecting to get a short little channeled uh, thing from, <laughs> from Spirit, but thank you. Our last one is we are all co-creators within a diverse universe. Every physical being on the planet is your partner in co-creation. And if you would accept that and appreciate the diversity of beliefs and desires, all of you would have more expansive, satisfying, and fulfilling experiences. Maybe you feel as though you don't deserve whatever it is that you desire and whatever it is that you want to create and manifest. But Spirit's like, no, 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 you, you deserve this. This is, this is just for you. Now, as a surprise, I didn't mention it elsewhere in the video, but we're going to do some runes. Now, volume warning, because these are really loud when I mix them together. I, I like to mix them around and make sure that I'm not getting the same ones every time that I cast. So turn it down, volume warning. Okay, we have three three that have come out. Now I'm new to reading runes, so I actually don't do reversals with them the way that I would with the tarot. Okay. So first we have Sowilo, letter S. So the letter S, that could be something significant to you. Maybe something about Saturday or Sunday could be significant to you. Um, just take what resonates there. But uh, yeah, letter S. The meaning of this rune is, uh, the general meaning is the sun. And associations can include good guidance, wholeness, awareness, hope, individual victory, and honor. So good guidance, maybe that falls in with um, that like advice or whatever it is from a past generation or a past, you know, ancestor or whatever that you come across in 2025 some good guidance there. But I also, I like with um, that sun meaning where it's like things start to feel better. Things start to feel sunnier for you. And I think it goes really well with this Ace of Cups message of joy coming in uh, after and light coming in after a long period of, of darkness and sadness. Next, we have the Uru's rune. That's the letter U. So letter U could be significant. Um, brute strength. This is the, that rune of uh, the, the wild bison or the wild bull. The brute strength. Strength, vitality, good health, power, healing. So I, uh, I, and I did see this. I think we went over this actually multiple times during your, your section here, group one, pile one, that 2025 is going to be the year where your healing journey like really, really kicks off. Maybe if you're already on your healing journey, you know, maybe it just gets more intense. Maybe you, you start to look into the more difficult stuff or the stuff that's been buried deeper down, or maybe the stuff that's happened long, long in the past that you didn't think still affected you or, or maybe don't even consciously remember, but there's that part of you that still does remember. Um, so I like seeing that there's healing from that. And then we did have that strength card at, uh, I think it was prediction number two anyway, where you're going to be feeling encouraged. You're going to feel like you're stronger, like, um, 
we had that mental fortitude. So maybe like stronger mind, stronger, maybe stronger willpower or stronger self-esteem. Anyways, just generally feeling stronger. And then next is our third rune here. This is the Iwas rune, uh, letters E-I. So that, you know, maybe could be significant to you in some way. Um, usually meaning yew tree. Well, that's what it means according to at least the guide that comes along with these runes. But um, yeah, I just, it doesn't necessarily have to be a yew tree, but I am just that is what it says in the book initially that came with this. Um, but I do just see the image of like various other types of trees. So that's like stability, perseverance, patience, endurance. Um, again, this is like another strength type of rune, but I think this is like strength, uh, setting up a solid foundation for long-term well-being. Yeah. So whatever work that you're doing, for yourself in 2025 with that, the healing and the, you know, the strength and stuff, it's going to set you up for a future of, uh, yeah, I think just better stability, perhaps mentally and emotionally and better, like a more stable, perhaps sense of self and a more stable self-esteem. So I like seeing this for you, group one, pile one, a lot of, a lot of healing stuff happening for you in 2025, which is good. We all need healing. And I, I'm glad to see it here that 2025 is going to be a really, really powerful year for your healing journey. So I'm going to wish you all the best for that. Now, this is the end of the reading for you guys in group one, pile one. I hope that it was helpful to you. Private readings are open. So if you wanted to maybe go more in depth with what we covered here or want to, uh, you know, get a, messages that are a bit more personalized to your situation because these pick a cards, as great as they are, they are quite general. Spirit gives more general messages. Sometimes we get the really specific things for a couple of viewers, but yeah, the link to, uh, my booking calendar will be in the description. It's calendly.com slash wild rose TC. And that is what I have for you, pile one. So again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, hello to pile two, group two. If you chose our pretty amethyst over here, then this will be your reading and your predictions for 2025. So I'm gonna get these shuffled. And then in the meantime, get my microphone cord out of the way so you don't have to see it the whole reading. And then in the meantime, I'll explain how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to break this down into three different predictions and we're going to let spirit decide what these predictions are and like what sort of category, I guess we could say that they are. We're going to keep that one that fell out. So we're going to work on our first prediction. So that's what we're, we're gonna do. We're gonna lay some cards for prediction number one, then we're gonna put them back, shuffle, then do some cards for prediction number two. And um, I think you see where this is going. So let's get some predictions for group two, pile two. What is the first prediction that they need, spirit? Ooh, okay, we had six of swords, tower. Tower is not always a bad thing though. It's just sometimes it's kind of a shocking uh, card to just get, especially when it flips out of your deck like that. Okay, Queen of Pentacles. I'm gonna try and move these. Oh yeah, okay. Seems like we're just gonna get some camera glare either way, but I'll be sure to hold these up a little closer to the camera so that you can see them a bit better. I'm gonna just go ahead and put these up here. Okay. Yeah, there's a big upheaval coming in 2025, but like I said, it's not necessarily a bad thing because it's going to take you from this turbulence that you're already experiencing and it's going to bring you into a, I think a place of uh, calm and better, there's better peace of mind that's coming for you. That sounded like it's coming for you, like almost threatening, but not like 
threatening you with peace of mind. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, you're getting your whatever's happening with this tower is not any worse than what you've already been through. That's the, the main thing here going from, yeah, turbulence to calm. And then on the other side of this with Queen of Pentacles, um, yeah, greater stability. So there's something in your life currently that I am picking up as very unpredictable uh, for a lot of you. It's very uncertain. It's very, I'm getting this word volatile, some kind of a volatile situation. Perhaps you're on eggshells in whatever situation you're at. Anyway, the big upheaval is like perhaps you're leaving this thing or, okay, example time. Uh, Spirit's just giving me, this is one example It's going to resonate with some if it doesn't, no worries. But uh, for some of you, this volatile situation, it could be like a job or a working environment that's very unhealthy. It's very unpredictable. It's turbulent. Um, on uh, job ads, they often refer to that as fast-paced environment. Or like, <laughs> they try and word it so nicely, but it's actually like, no, no, we're stressed and short-staffed and, you know, trying to make a miracle here. There's that kind of energy that you've already been through. And then this tower is like something really big changes. So like maybe there's somebody there that's been causing you problems. Perhaps they leave or like a CEO or a manager or some, something ends up leaving. And it's like, it disrupts the whole, um, I'm going to say the whole ecosystem of like the office or the school or what, you know, whatever, whatever, wherever it is that you work. And yeah, like bigger transformations, perhaps there's like a, uh, I'm getting the word handover. So there could be maybe a change of management coming if this is like a job situation. And then with our queen of pentacles, someone being like, whoa, this is the way things have been running. Like, no wonder you guys are so stressed out. No, no, no. There's going to be changes around here. We're going to make things, this is going to be different. And like something, whatever changes are going to be made are more sustainable, lead to a more sustainable outcome, more sustainable, maybe like environment or way of doing things. If the, the job thing, again, that could resonate with only a few people maybe. Um, but another uh, example Spirit wants me to share is uh, like a relationship. You could be in, again, that word volatile. Yeah, some kind of like a volatile or toxic uh, type of relationship. And it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It could be a friendship too even. Or an acquaintance ship or a situation ship. Anyway where this person is always hot and cold on you and maybe you're on eggshells around them and you know you're you're pulling into your driveway after work and that person's home and you're like what am I going to walk into today am I going to get the happy version of them am I going to get the rage version am I going to get the you know the drunk version I don't know whatever it your situation your mileage here may vary but there's something with this big change where it's like suddenly you're not going to be on those eggshells anymore. Perhaps this big change, I mean, with the tower, I don't see like a, a uh, 10 of swords where it's like completely we're over done, but something changes here. And maybe if you're not like leaving, leaving, you could be making an escape plan um, because some relationships that are this volatile and unpredictable, like maybe for whatever reason it is not viable for you to just up and go maybe you're working on some kind of a a plan here but i don't see anything like devil or um yeah no no i don't have like the devil card here which is usually one of our main ones for abuse but the situation doesn't have to be abusive in order for it to still be toxic and unhealthy and unpredictable Either way, your outcome here is still stability. So I'm going to pull a card just for the relationships. What changes here with this tower that makes the relationship go from volatile and unpredictable to stable? Okay, full new beginning. Okay, lovers. Okay, all right. couple different things here. 
in a, maybe in like a friendship sense, maybe you do move on from that friendship. Maybe you, you're not just fully like, okay, no, we're done. I can't stand you, etc. But maybe you're like, okay, well, we'll keep that person kind of at arm's reach here. Cause maybe you do still care about them and stuff like that. But you're like, in the meantime, I'm going to go pursue some new connections, new friendships, somebody that loves me and cares about me. And then in the uh, relationship kind of example here, maybe there's no card for like break up necessarily because maybe you're not even actually dating. It could just be a situation ship where there's really no need for a formal breakup. You're just like, eh, you know what? Moving on. This person's too, they're too hot and cold with me. You know, they only, I I'll text them. I'll ask they'll ask about my day and I'll text them like a paragraph and then ask what theirs. And they just say it was fine or lol or K or O oh. friggin' hate that when people just reply. Oh, <laughs> anyway. So you're like, okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to move on and find love elsewhere. And then in the, the committed relationship thing again, cause I didn't see for sure 10 of swords breakup or death being like, Okay, you know, this has to come to an end and spirits making that choice for you, even though you want to try and hold on to it. No, I do see like a new chapter, maybe depending on the situation, you or your partner or both maybe decide to go um, get some kind of external help, perhaps some kind of um, like a, you know, marriage counseling or relationship counseling. Sorry, I'm just trying to move these. I realized they were really, really off center. Uh, move these and have them so that you're not getting just all the camera glare. Okay. Whatever. Good enough. Fine. Um, but yeah, some kind of like help. And it's like you with this relationship, you're like, okay, we're going to start over and we're going to try this again. We're going to focus on how we love each other. And cause maybe you're just turbulent. Maybe there's just a lot of fighting or disagreeing or something like that going on. It doesn't have to be abuse. It doesn't have to be necessarily toxic, but when left unchecked for long enough, turbulence can become toxic. So maybe there is some kind of, you're like, okay, you know what? We're done with this fighting. Like we have to try something else. So maybe you, you try something else that leads to uh, a more solid, like loving connection. Either way. And stronger relationship there with Queen of Pentacles. Either way. Whatever your situation is. First prediction for pile two, group two. Moving from a volatile and turbulent situation due to there is a major upheaval <clears throat> and then it leads to greater stability. Now in the committed relationship example, maybe going to some kind of marriage counselor or relationship counselor, that could be a huge change. Maybe neither of you have been to therapy before and don't know what to expect and don't know what to do or there there's some kind of big shift to your routines or something that you need to do together but yeah I see that but either way it, it, whatever it is and whatever route you take or whatever happens here with this tower you do become more stable there is something to do with more more independence maybe you're more sure of yourself as well and yeah, just better, stronger foundation. All right, so that was our first prediction. We're gonna go ahead and put these back. We're going to shuffle. And then we're going to look at the second prediction for pile two, group two. Okay, Empress, interesting. There are already a couple things going on there with that Empress, but all right, we're gonna take those that flew out. Okay, Three of Wands. Ooh, Ace of Cups. Okay, the first thing Spirit wants me to um, go into, and this is not gonna be for everybody, but it, it will be for some of you. It's for enough of you that Spirit brings us up. You've been trying for a while to have a baby and nothing was happening. Like you were just getting negative test after negative test or just problem after problem. And for whatever reason, it just was not happening for you. Just wasn't panning out. Well, I see here with this Empress, uh, this is the wife slash mother card. And in this case, I'm getting mother energy. She's literally pregnant on this card. 
Perhaps 2025 is the year that you finally get that positive test. We see there's the Ace of Cups. Aces are yeses. Um, this is like an overflow of emotion. So you could, there could be all kinds. I'm seeing like happy tears. I'm seeing frustrated tears because of all the, the past uh, attempts that just didn't work. And it's finally all being released now because you you just finally have that yes. You finally have that that positive test that you're, you've been looking for and hoping for. Three of Wands, this is like all your your efforts that, um, you know, you've the work you've done in the past, the efforts that you've put in in the past, it's coming back. You're, you're about to manifest it. It's literally your ships are coming in. So whatever, uh, you know, maybe there were dietary changes and, and other type of routine changes. Maybe there were medications or, or medical, you know, procedures or treatments you needed to do in the past. It's, it's working. Um, so I love seeing that for you. I'm also intrigued by this Empress being card number three and three of wands. I mean, it's also a three. Um, March is the third month. So perhaps in March 2025, you you figure out, oh my God, like a baby, I'm pregnant. So, you know, that could be something. You find out you're pregnant in March. Maybe you, you get that Christmas baby or, you know, December baby. Um, I also just see for some of you, you could be starting treatments, some kind of like maybe fertility treatments or, or other kind of medical treatments. And that, that could be also in the month of March. But that's exciting news for you guys. And I love seeing that. Now let's move from literally a baby and pregnancy to something else because not everybody wants children and not everybody is necessarily trying to have children. So for those who have picked pile two, how else can we interpret the spirit? Okay, well, very similar, but maybe instead of a literal baby, it's uh, a manifestation. Sometimes we have like a passion project or something we really care about and, and you know, it can be referred to as uh, our baby. Um, like for example, like my, my channel and my, my business here, Wild Rose Tarot Consulting, that's my baby. This is like, I've put all this effort and this work into it and I want it to grow and I want to nurture it. It doesn't have to be a channel or a business, but whatever it is that you are trying to manifest for yourself and whatever it is that you're trying to grow more of in your life, I see that it is coming like more of whatever energy it is that you're looking for is coming in. And then I do see again with this yes, like, yep, here we go. Uh, joy, excitement, outpouring of emotions. Yeah, something you're manifesting is coming in 2025. And again, it could be in March as well. It doesn't just have to be a baby. It could just some some kind of goal or dream or desire that you have could be coming to you in March or you could be getting some kind of an opportunity to um, maybe like further that manifestation or an opportunity to put in some more inspired action. These wands are about like taking action and, and working towards one's goals, like the laboring aspect of it. So maybe you're like trying to write a book or something and you're, you've, you know, been trying for months or years and you've been getting rejections from agents and companies and stuff. And you're like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm about to give up. Perhaps in March, you finally hear back from someone and they're like, Hey, I totally missed this. I can't believe that ended up in my junk folder or like, Hey, I totally, I've been so busy. I forgot to you know, even respond and acknowledge this email. Like I saw what you've submitted and I really like it. And I want to give you an opportunity to work on it more. So perhaps with the book example, you know, maybe you are able to get in touch with um, an editor who gives you like, here's some suggestions on how you can improve your book. And then you get time to actually put that work in and do it. And it feels very rewarding. It's like, it's like, oh, finally, yes. Again, your mileage may vary. It doesn't have to be a book. It doesn't have to be a baby. So whatever it is that you're trying to get here. We'll see. Let's pull more cards. Well, actually, we're going to just look at the bottom of the deck here. Seven of Pentacles. Something paying off after a long time of work. A lot of effort. Could be several years. Could even be seven years. I mean, when we do timing with tarot, at least when I do, the Pentacles are representative of years. And uh, yeah, this could be something you've maybe okay, with the baby example, maybe you've been trying for seven years 
and nothing was happening. And then you finally get that positive test or you uh, have put like seven years worth of your blood, sweat and tears and your effort into this book or this creative thing that you're trying to manifest or, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to manifest. You've been working on it for so long and it's something you've wanted for so long. It doesn't have to be seven years, but this, it does just mean it's been a long time. And that harvest, this is what the seven of pentacles is about is that harvest reaping what one has sown goes along a little bit with that three of wands with one's ships coming in. But this, uh, with the pentacles, it's like, this is something that you've been waiting for a lot longer than with this three of, three of wands. Okay, emperor on the bottom of, of the seven of pentacles underneath that. I like seeing that we got our little matching pair with the empress and the emperor. Yeah, so that parent, that message with the baby, like some of you are definitely going to become parents if that's uh, what you've been trying for and really both wanting. I uh, I love that for you. I think that's, it's just, I love when divine timing is, you know, it finally reveals itself. And it's like, here, you've tried so hard and you've, you've been wanting this for so long in spirit. It's like, I'm, I can finally give this to you. Now with perhaps not necessarily the baby example, emperor could be there's somebody in a position of authority or influence who can help you to get whatever it is that you are trying to manifest. So we're gonna put these back. We're gonna shuffle again, and we're gonna get our third prediction for pile two, group two. Third prediction for pile two, group two. Let's see. Nine of swords, 10 of wands. Somebody's tired and anxious, but okay. But this is not too bad. I think this is what you're already going through. It doesn't mean you will become anxious or will become overburdened with something. Um, although sometimes in life, anxiety and exhaustion will just come up. And then Spirit is saying we're going to look at the two on the bottom of the deck. Okay, I need to rearrange these a little bit better. We're going to have to just bear with the the lens glare, the camera glare, whatever. But you can still see where it says 10 of wands, page of wands, etc. Okay. Interesting. I think this is when you're finally like asking for help. We're reading these a little bit out of order. Sometimes I do right to left, but sometimes it's just whatever spirit tells me to do, I'll just do it. Finally, yeah, with this page of wands, something about your submitting um, could be some some kind of application for some, you know, some type of assistance. Um, and you're expressing like your need and your desire for this help and the support. Or maybe you didn't voice that in the past. Maybe you were a little bit too afraid or you thought, no, no, I can handle it. I can handle it. Because look at our nine of wands. He's walking on an injured leg. He's like, no, no, I, I'm, I'm good. I can handle it. But that doesn't mean it's good for him. Because look what happens with this ten of wands. She is completely like overwhelmed, overburdened. She's Her back is sore. She's just holding. She's carrying too much, doing too much on her own. So whatever has been going on here, you've, there's something that you've just been doing too much of by yourself. And you don't have to do it on your own you're realizing you can ask for help or maybe you, you get that opportunity to ask for help or some kind of resource becomes known to you. Um, just this is a very specific message, but maybe for those who live in like rural communities or very small towns or villages, um, you may not always have the resources without having to drive to the next bigger center. Perhaps your town gets access to some kind of like... Um, 
Well, I don't know, some kind of service. Like it could be victim services. It, it could be some kind of mental health services or some other kind of like medical uh, resource like that. Because I, I feel like it has to do with healing and with mental health especially. Because we have here with our Nine of Swords, this is anxiety. This is like fear. It's nightmares. It's It's just... The stuff that really plagues your mind when you should be sleeping. Because during the day, oftentimes we keep ourselves so busy that we don't really allow whatever is in our subconscious or whatever our minds and bodies want us to process. We don't really allow that to come up because they're like, no, no, no I'm, too, I'm too busy. I'm talking to the client right now or like I'm making a video right now or like I'm trying to clean my house or I'm trying to raise my kids or what, whatever. You know, I'm, I can't do this. And then at nighttime, when you're finally in a position where you're not having to do anything, literally all you have to do is close your eyes and sleep. Your brain's like, now, now we're going to run through all these different things that you didn't let me run through and process during the day. So I'm seeing that there's, there's, it has to do with the mental health. And again, with the moon here, yeah, I don't think, it seems as though you haven't been sleeping well. And I think this is something that's already happening. So um, for 2025, that prediction where you're like, okay, I really need help with this. Like for, let's just go into a, a specific example for mental health. And we're going to put a little TW, a little trigger warning. Maybe you have some kind of PTSD or some kind of trauma. Nine of wands is actually one of my cards for, uh, like functioning in your daily life, even though you have trauma that is affecting you, um, you know, we don't know how long ago before this particular image that this guy hurt his arm and his leg, but we do know that it's affecting his present moment where he's walking on these this injured leg and he's trying to use this wand for support, but he's suffering, he's struggling, it's getting to be too much because he's trying to handle it on his own. So perhaps you have yeah, maybe nightmares, literally nightmares. The moon, that's your subconscious. That's like your, your dreams, you're sleeping. And then there's fear, there's panic, there's anxiety. And maybe you've just been trying to manage that on your own and maybe trying to self medicate even with, and, and that can be in, you know, many different ways, different substances or whatever. Um, but it's eventually like, well, with the nightmares, when you're not sleeping well, you can get by, I think, for a couple days with poor sleep. But eventually you can't keep that up because eventually it is going to really come back and hurt your your body where you're just so exhausted that you're in a position where maybe you could get hurt or, you know, because you, you're tired or sleep deprived. Maybe you didn't watch your step and you tripped and you injured something or you know it's your mileage may vary like I said earlier um and you're finally like okay I I need help how, how do I get through this like how do I sleep without nightmares like how do I process this and it doesn't have to be PTSD but I I am feeling that that's something that is relevant to a lot of you watching this um and when I say PTSD it could be from like one trauma um but it also could be complex ptsd where it was something from uh, for early childhood or or perhaps like earlier years of your life teenage years or something um and maybe now you're older and you're like well i thought i was over all that that was 10 years ago that was 15 20 years ago why you know why is this coming back why am i still bothered well now you're going to be asking for that help so let's see what else we can get uh, just in regards to this situation, asking for help, receiving some kind of help for the mental health. Can we have that seven of pentacles again? This could be something you've suffered with for a long time that you're maybe finally getting. Oh, yeah. Look at that with the sun. Finally getting some kind of help for I'm hearing for some of you, you're going to go on the correct medication. For those of you that that resonates with who maybe require some kind of medication for their physical or their mental health some uh, an appointment that you've been on the waiting list for for a long time doesn't have to be seven years but it can just still be a very long time um again doesn't have to be ptsd or trauma it could be something 
you know, it could be something else. You could be waiting for perhaps an autism screening or an ADHD uh, screening or an appointment to get on proper medications for that. Um, and then it is going to have a good outlook for you because it's like you're going to get the answers that you need, whether you were looking for those answers or not. And then it's like, there's just like, <laughs> I'm getting the words like a ray of hope literally ray of sunshine there with that sun, but it's like, there's that ray of hope where it's like, oh, I don't have to do this alone. Like, I don't have to just power through. I can get help through, you know, this, this professional resource or like through this, oh, wow, this medication, maybe you're, it's something to help you sleep or something to help take the nightmares away or, or, or whatever it is that's causing this kind of stress. I do see a lot of you are going to get an appointment you've been on the wait list for, or you'll be able to finally get on the wait list. But it is going to be for, for your best. Uh, and this is, I think this is fantastic news for you guys. But we're going to get into the Oracle cards now, just for any extra information regarding your 2025. So we're going to pull a Moonology. Hold your vision with fixed moon. Okay. And then uh, I'm feeling like I need to read these two. Balance spirituality and practicality. Ooh, maybe some of you guys have been, and there's nothing wrong with using spirituality to help you with healing. I mean, that's kind of like my whole thing here. Um, but maybe you were trying to bypass a lot of things just using spirituality when you could have all of this time been uh, like trying to get help elsewhere or in a more practical way. Like, for example, like maybe and I'm not saying this to like judge or shame anybody. No, I'm just the way I'm going to put this is just it's going to sound silly. But like maybe you were tr literally trying to like pray away your trauma or pray away the anxiety and the depression or pray away the ADHD or the, whatever it is. And spirit's like, okay, that's fine. Like you can pray for help with this, but maybe part of your like life curriculum or, you know, life path, or whatever is to reach out and, and let someone else help you because maybe that's part of their path is to be the helper and part of your path is to be helped by this person or by this organization or what you know resource whatever we have hold your vision yeah whatever you're going through i'm hearing from spirit like it does get better and this does get better in 2025 and i think right now that's kind of like your your goal here is to feel better maybe like, literally maybe to sleep better to focus better, whatever it is. And spirit's like, it, don't give up. Cause maybe you're about to give up and be like, ugh, just fuck it, whatever. I'll just survive. Um, no, no, it's like, no, it, it, it's, it's going to be okay. Just keep, just hold on for now. We're going to pull an ask and it is given. Now there's printing on both sides of the deck. So my agreement with spirit is that the proper message for you will be somewhere in the middle after I'm done shuffling. I don't really look at them while I'm shuffling. I've kind of just got my eyes closed. So who knows if I'm like bumping my camera or anything like that. If I am, whoops. And if I'm not, then I'd be very, very surprised. Okay, middle. I'm feeling drawn to this particular one in the corner. I'm rediscovering the art of allowing my natural well-being. We call this discipline the art of allowing. It is the art of allowing the well-being, which makes up every particle of that which you are and that which you come from, to continue to flow through you as you continue to be. Okay, so maybe part of allowing this natural well-being is just reaching out and and realizing that you don't have to do all of this on your own we are here put here on earth to connect with each other and to help and support each other and yeah like the self-discovery and the self-help and stuff totally but that's just a part of it the other part is again with the connecting with others and helping each other to to heal and to grow so maybe you just need to let someone help you and that will 
really, um, maybe it'll give you like better tools to handle things on, on your own. All right. So for a surprise here, I didn't mention it earlier, but we're going to look at a couple of runes. Now volume warning, because these are loud when I mix them around so that they're headphone users, RIP. We have a Wunjo rune. This one is all about joy. Now it looks like the letter P here, but I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna just quickly go back in the book. I'm pretty sure it represents W. Uh, with that name, Wunjo. Yeah, letter, letter W. So W, there's something there that could be significant to you. You know, maybe it could be a name that starts with W. There could be something about Wednesday, could be a, a particularly uh, like strong day of the week for you or something like that. And yeah, this window room is all about joy, harmony, prosperity, well-being, self-worth. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love this. There's just a huge healing message for you guys with this group, for this uh, pile two group too. Maybe you, you let someone help you and you just kind of rediscover that joy of life. You're... The, you know, the joy of, oh, wow, I actually really do love myself. The joy of just being yourself or the joy of just being in general. Next, we have, I think it's um, Berkana. Yeah, it is Berkana. And that this is the letter B. And so B could also be something that's significant to you, a name or a location or something. Um, just take that, how it resonates. This one is also about like growth, but there are new beginnings here, birth and rebirth, spring and fertility. So for those of you uh, with that very first prediction with the Empress and how maybe, you know, you were trying for a baby or you wanted to expand your family, this is literally like that fertility birth and well, and, and, and rebirth. So maybe you're trying for your second or third child or, you know, something like that. And Spirit's like, yep, here you go. Here's your confirmation that it's going to happen in 2025. For those of you where the baby example does not apply, it's like rebirth as in like a new, like a newer version of yourself. Like I'm getting something about like an upgraded and a, a more healed and like a healthier version of yourself. So this is a fantastic message for you, group two. I really hope this was helpful uh, private readings are open. Calendly.com slash TC is where you can book, but that link is going to be in the description. If you wanted to look into this further or in a more maybe personalized type of way, uh, we can absolutely do that. You can just book yourself through the Calendly app and then we can go from there. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for all your support with your, your views, likes, shares, etc., and your comments especially. I hope that you have a really, really good day, week, etc. <laughs> whenever you're watching this. And I'll see you again next time. All right, pile number three, group three. If you chose this uh, shiny little, I'm again, I'm assuming it's some kind of a quartz. I found it outside on the ground uh, a while ago. If you know what this rock is called, let me know in the comments. <laughs> but if this is the one you chose, if this is the pile you chose, then uh, this reading will be meant just for you, your 2025 predictions. So we're gonna shuffle and we're gonna get ready here. And while I'm shuffling, I'll explain what we're gonna do. So what I've done for the last two piles and will do for this one is I will kind of split this into three smaller sections. So. We'll have three different predictions and we're going to let spirit pick what kind of predictions they are. So we're not going to be like, okay, here's your love prediction. Here's your money prediction. Here's your, you know, whatever. Uh, we're just going to let spirit decide what these predictions are going to be and what sort of category, I guess we could put them under. It's uh, whatever it is that you need to know about your 2025, three things that spirit's going to let us find out for the coming year. All right. And then, of course, we have our oracle cards to 
uh, add extra information or any extra messages. So pile three, group three, what is the first prediction? Spirit, what is the first prediction for pile three, group three? What do we got? Oh, okay. We had her, that page of swords, we had her fall out or kind of flip out when we were shuffling and I put it back. So it's funny that that came back. King of Pentacles. I am so done fighting with the lens glare, whatever it is that the glare that's on the cards here. Um, but you can still see where it says King of Pentacles. And I will make sure I hold up the cards a little bit closer to the camera when we go over them. Eight of Cups. Mm. Okay. I'll go with this for now, just these three, and we'll pull more, uh, you know, if we need to. Okay, so here's kind of a quick little message. You've been, it, it seems like currently you've been making yourself smaller. And when I say that, I mean, a lot of people may already know what that means. But for those of you who don't, to make yourself smaller is to like either change or hide aspects of yourself or to um, maybe not give your, your full truth or your full perspective. You, some people refer to it as dimming your light because others find it too bright or making yourself small so that you can make other people more comfortable or changing some kind of aspect of yourself and not being fully your authentic self, but it's, it's done with the intent of making yourself more palatable to others. And spirit's like, no, 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 no. You need, we're, we're done playing small. We're going to play big now. We're going to, this is your authentic self with this King of Pentacles. Now the gender doesn't really matter. It's the energy that's present. This king of pentacles, he's confident. He's like, he, he knows what he wants and he knows how to get it. He knows how to ask for what he wants. So perhaps that's something you struggle with right now is asking for what you want or making your needs otherwise known. He knows how to, because the pentacle is, it's in his hand, right? So it's like he wanted it, he figured out how to go and get it, how to ask for it, how to, you know, whatever, chase that opportunity to get it. And he doesn't, he doesn't play small. He's the king. This is his full self. He's like, this is the way I am. You take it or leave it because I'm not changing for you. Eight of Cups, walking away. We are walking away from the notion that we need to play small in order to make other people feel comfortable. We're walking away from that desire to placate other people when sometimes it is not a bad thing to feel a little bit of discomfort. You are not responsible for the way that other people feel. So I think that's something else you're walking away from here with this eight of cups. You're walking away from, like we said, that, that shrinking yourself down or dimming your light because other people find it too bright or, you know, other people find you to be too much. So you're hiding parts of yourself because you don't want them to feel uncomfortable. You don't want them to feel embarrassed or whatever. And now spirit's like, no, 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 we're done doing that. You're going to be your true authentic self, whether other people like it or not. And you know, the people who don't like it and think that that's too much, well, nuts to them. It's not their choice. It's not their life path. It's your life path. And it's, you know, they've, they've got their own issues to work through and you're not responsible for it. Um, it's literally not your circus and these people are not your clowns. Okay. So what else can we know here for group three? Let's just get a couple more cards. Just see what else we can find out here. Ooh, yeah, this is going to be tough. Okay, I see that with the tower. That's going to be a major adjustment. Um, spirits tell me to look at the bottom. There's temperance. Okay, two off the bottom. That's it. Spirit's saying no more. So, I think a lot of you guys who chose this pile are people pleasers or recovering people pleasers. And it seems as though, you know how we have the the fight or flight, they call it fight or flight response. Well, there are two other responses. There's freeze and there's fawn. I think a lot of you have chosen this pile, fawn, right? So what that means is 
you um, allow yourself to to walk on eggshells or change parts of yourself because you you would rather have people accept you and just like you or straight up just not pay you any mind um, because of maybe in the past where you've been bullied or ridiculed or otherwise abused or hurt for being who you truly are. Spirit's like, we're going to work on going back to being that true, authentic self. It's And it might be very scary for some of you. Um, I'm getting a, like some kind of message about masking and unmasking. Now, everybody does some sort of masking. Usually when we hear about masking, it, it, it is in reference to a person with autism or ADHD or some other type of neurodivergent condition. Now this could describe you. You you could actually have autism or, or ADHD or some people have that AUDHD wombo combo. Um, <laughs> you know, that could be something you're dealing with and you're, you, you were bullied in the past for just being your, you know, your true quirky, amazing, interesting self. And so you learn to, oh, I better not talk. I have this special interest. Like, let's just say, for example, like your special interest is birds or something. And you know everything about every kind of bird in your local region. And it's your passion about it. You love it. But people used to make fun of you, maybe like your family or your classmates or whatever. They used to really make fun of you and just absolutely shit on all your special interests. So you learned to not talk about them and you learn to pretend you didn't know and what's really hard and okay so as somebody with ADHD and as a very very likely on the spectrum I'm still awaiting a screening but um, I'm just gonna use myself as an example I have some very special interests okay my, it's not necessarily birds but one of my very very special interests is uh, adult animated cartoons okay for example, one in particular, it used to be Bob's Burgers, and then um, now the specialist of special interest is now this show called Dr. Katz, Professional Therapist. I know everything about that show. I know the program, the computer program that was used to animate it. I've downloaded the program. I've learned how to use the program. I, I know like all this trivia. I know about different things about the the cast members and, and like Jonathan Katz and fun facts about his life and, and you know, who, who all the voice actors in the show are. And, um, you know, maybe in, in, this is not a special interest I've always had. It's a more recent one from a few years ago, but let's just say it was a special interest I had as a child. Let's, let's just pretend. Um, and if I, somebody was talking about the show and got a fact wrong, it would really bug me. <laughs> um, as, and it does when, when I hear somebody's discussing like Bob's Burgers or Dr. Katz or like the Great North or whatever these animated shows and they get a fact wrong and I'm like, Ooh fighting the urge to correct you um because in the past with other special interests I would do that and people would be like you're such a jerk why do you have to you don't have to always be right you ha you're such a know-it-all okay we can go back to a childhood example okay my special interest uh, I remember when I was about 12 my special interest with dogs I wanted to be a veterinarian I wanted to have a farm with my dogs, I wanted specifically a whippet. Uh, I knew everything about like all these different breeds of dogs. I could point out from a distance, you know, someone's walking their dog or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, that's a black lab crossed with some other type of lab. Or like, ooh, that's a Bergamasco. That is a shaggy little dude. Um, I knew all this stuff, but my couple, one of my, one of my siblings, no shade to this person, obviously. We were just kids then he used to make fun of me a lot and like <laughs> criticize me and and be like nobody cares this much about like shut up nobody cares no one cares about this as much as you do and so I shut down and now you know can I recognize a, a Rhodesian Ridgeback from down the street probably but could I recognize oh, this dog is a mixed breed between this and this, and this is where their history stems back, and this is, you know, their country of origin. No, I can't because I suppress that part of myself. Anyway, oh my God, I'm sorry, guys. Long tangent, just talking about myself, but th maybe there's something in there that resonates with some of you. You had to shut down an aspect of yourself is really the point I'm trying to make so that other people either wouldn't perceive you or wouldn't make fun of you or, or just wouldn't be uncomfortable around you, okay? 
but this dropping the mask is going to be very difficult. So maybe this means you are just more open about, hey, yeah, I love birds or I love dogs or I love Dr. Katz, professional therapist and other adult animated cartoons. <laughs> um, and you know what? I'm not ashamed of knowing all these different things about this special interest of mine. Um, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a special interest. Either. It could just, it can just be, sometimes we don't show our true emotions. Sometimes we were shut down and invalidated at a very young age and told nobody cares. Stop talking. Shut up. I don't care. Sucks to be you kind of a thing. And so you go, okay, well, I guess I'm just not going to open up about what I think or about what I feel or you're, you know, just otherwise belittled. And so part of you is like, okay, well, just for my safety and my protection, I got to shut this down and I got to, I got to put the mask up and I got to fake and I got to pretend and I got to pretend and I got to pretend and I can't be my real self. I have to be whoever, whatever version of me that you like and find most palatable. And that's exhausting. And spirit's like, we're done. We're not doing that anymore. You're going to drop the mask. It's, it's going to be okay. Temperance and Knight of Sword or Knight of Pentacles, excuse me. These are both cards for a slow process. So there's healing here that's going to come along with the dropping of the mask and with the becoming your more authentic self. It's going to be very, there's something like very cathartic, I'm getting that word cathartic, um, but also very healing. But spirit saying it's okay for it to take time. This process, I think, starts for you in 2025 and it will continue throughout the year, but it's it, it's not something that's going to transform in like two days, right? Or in two weeks or even two months. It's, it's something that's going to take time. But it's okay because the changes that do take a long time tend to stick longer. Spirit wants me to give the example of like um, weight loss. I don't know. That could be triggering for some people. So we'll just throw up a TW there. But um, sometimes when a person you know, maybe tries a different diet or something and they lose a significant amount of weight very quickly, it's not always sustainable. But then sometimes a person can lose little bits over time. Maybe that's like a couple pounds a week and then that adds up over, you know, over the months and then over the year. And then that kind of progress for whatever reason, for some people that is more sustainable and it sticks longer. So this dropping of the mask and, and, being your more authentic self, it's going to take a while, but I think it will, the effects of this um, are going to stick longer. It's going to be more sustainable long-term than if you were to just all of a sudden one day force yourself to drop that mask and, and you know, that could be very jarring and very, it could be very frightening for some people. And so they, they retreat and go back into this and then no progress is actually made, right? Okay. So that was our first prediction, becoming your full, honest, quirky, brilliant self and walking away from dimming your light because other people find it too bright or, you know, changing parts of yourself because other people think you're too much or that it's embarrassing or whatever. That's their problem. And if they're going to keep feeling that way, that's, it's not your responsibility to fix that or change that. It's, you just observe it and go, okay, well, that sucks for you, but I'm happy being the way I am. So let's get into that second prediction for group three pile, whoop, group three pile three, second prediction, group three pile three, second prediction for 2025. All right. Hangman, perhaps change in perspective or uh, something happens after a short delay. Oh, okay. And Spirit wants me to look at the bottom with this one. Oh, okay. So this seems like financially or, or otherwise materially because we have th literally three of these are pentacles, right? Right now, maybe you're in a place where your budget is tight money is tight and you're holding on to what you got and you're a little bit hesitant to um, seeing something about investing and now that could be actually investing in like the market it could just be investing there's like investing in yourself where for example like um it, going back to school or doing some kind of post-secondary or training sometimes you have to 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 pay for that well for post-secondary yeah you have to pay for that depending on where you are 
for some kinds of like job training, sometimes you do have to pay for it out of pocket, but it's an investment in yourself for your future. Um, either way, money is kind of tight. It seems like that at the moment, but then there's nine of pentacles and this is the security and having what you need and having what you want and having um, within reach even. Like how she's able to just reach up and pick the grapes there. She's able to just reach over and pet her dog. It's it's like um, I'm just seeing where your your finances go from this budget being tight and maybe your perspective for the last for the past year, the last little while was okay, money's hard to come by. I'm broke, everything's too expensive. There could be some kind of mindset shift where maybe you, you are working on uh, like attracting abundance and maybe changing your mindset that way and and working on some kind of like money manifestation that could be something to work into look into excuse me to work on that could help bring about this change but there also I am also just seeing like a shift in your circumstances yeah I love seeing that everything that she needs here is within reach I'm seeing um at the grocery store somebody is deciding between the store brand, you know, usually the cheaper, the store brand, you know, uh, what, what is the one I'm thinking of? Um, great value brand versus, you know, whatever, another kind that might be better or has a better flavor or works better, whatever it is. I'm just seeing where she or the person that's like at the store is looking at this and then before they'd be like well this is cheaper it doesn't taste very good but it gets the job done or like it doesn't work that great but it works enough now this like the one that you actually wanted oh this one tastes way better or this one works way better it's more expensive but now you're just like you know what I don't actually have to look at the price tag now I can just put this in my cart it's within reach it's within my budget I can do this And then how we go from this to this. Three of Pentacles, teamwork. Okay, so maybe the, you know, at your, your job or something, there could be some kind of a new project that comes up that you end up working on and it could pay off really well. Perhaps there's some kind of, you get maybe some kind of a bonus or a, like a raise or something because of your good work. Um, this could also be just receiving support, financial support. Maybe there's an advisor that you talk to or, or like a banker or somebody to help you. Here's how you can take what you have now and grow it so that, you know, in the near future, you'll have even more. Or, you know, well, if you make this kind of savings account instead of this one, this one will pay out better interest if you, you know, keep a certain amount in here all year or whatever. Um but yeah, there's some kind of like teamwork, support from other people. We're going to just put this here. Let's see if there's anything else to know about this. I love seeing that you're going from, yeah, tight budget to a more flexible budget. I'm getting that word, flexibility. Flexibility. Wow, words are hard. And it's through the support. And there's something I'm getting like that. There's that Beatles song about I get by with a little help from my friends. That with a little help from my friends. What's going on? Let's clarify. Hmm. Okay, so I mean, there was the, the professional advisor uh, route that you can go, but I'm also seeing, just to clarify when Spirit was giving me that with a little help from my friends, it's possible that you, you do have a, like a, a friend or a colleague or somebody that is in your network there who is like, hey, I see that, you know, you've been working here for a long time and you've, you're really good, but like you've been in this department with no raise for like four years or whatever. They're like, you know what? I actually heard about an opening, you know, maybe upstairs in this department or, you know, like some, they, they might help you with some kind of a lateral move in your career that ends up paying better or giving you more projects or more, more things to work on and more opportunities uh, to earn more money. 
And it works out because six of wands on the bottom of that, it's like, yeah, they know. Somebody that is trustworthy to you, again, with like, there's just a lot of, the only example I really am getting so strongly here is like, it has to do with work. Um, but yeah, someone gives you like, hey, some advice, like, hey, did you know, like Susan from accounting just left and like, I think you would be really good for that role. It, it pays more than what we make here in this department or, or, you know, it doesn't have to be Susan from accounting. It doesn't have to be accounting at all. But you know what I mean, though? And they, the person who gives you this heads up, like they had, they got it from a good source, some kind of reliable source. And it was, it's suggested to you with good intentions. It's not suggested to set you up to fail or anything like that. It's because you really actually can do it. Okay. So I love seeing that. Or somebody, yeah, just gives you an opportunity, like points you towards an opportunity where you can earn more money. It doesn't have to just be a colleague helping you with a lateral move or a promotion or whatever. It, you know, it could be a friend being like, because maybe you're a freelancer or something, right? And, you know, maybe a, a friend or somebody online that you communicate with often is like, hey, did you know this site is actually looking for somebody to contribute? Or like, hey, this, this contract just opened up and I didn't get it. Or like, I don't want to do it, but you know, here, maybe that's something that you'll like and they'll like pass on the details to you or something. Interesting. But we're gonna put these back and we're gonna look at our third prediction for group three, pile three. What is the third prediction for group three, pile three? Third prediction, group three, pile three. What, woo, okay. Sure, all right. These fell out and spirit's like, yeah, keep them. Okay, moon, three of swords, six of swords, nine of cups. I already can see what kind of story this is telling and where it's going. Okay, there's healing here and it has to do with your mental health with the moon, the subconscious, the just within the mind. Um, there could be something that is currently like bothering you, harming you, stressing you out, contributing to maybe your anxiety or trauma triggers or, you know, depression or, or anything like that. There's something in your subconscious that uh, hasn't been totally processed. It hasn't been fully brought up to the front of your mind, but it still is affecting you. Your, maybe your body is holding on to something, some kind of a painful memory or something that the, that, that uh, conscious part of your mind has kind of forgotten about because maybe it happened 15, 20, 30 years ago, but your body still holds on to it and it still has an effect. And it, it's just, it's like undeniable that something from your past, a past trauma or something has, it still continues to hurt to this day, even though it may not affect your daily life. It may not be something that's happening to you right now or something that's happening to you anymore. In 2025, you start to move on from it, which is, this is really good news. This is the Six of Swords, and this is about moving from turbulence to calm. And it's a tough transition. It's a tough journey. But it's not going to be any worse or any more difficult than what you've already experienced. We have Nine of Cups on the end, and this guy is satisfied. This is wish come true. He's happy. He's sitting. It looks, it's a little bit hard to, to tell, but uh, you know what? From the colors and stuff here, it looks kind of like he's just on a beach here with like all of his cups behind him. It's just nice, chill sunset. I'm getting kind of like, um, oh, you know that that's the SpongeBob music. It's the, the Hawaiian relaxing, like ukulele kind of music. Um, yeah, and something about like the sun is going down on this like dark day. 
That's what I'm just getting from spirit. The sun is going down on this dark day, and when the sun goes down, we have our night, which is, you know, you know the, also, again, I guess, darkness. But then we have what happens after sundown. Eventually, the sun comes back up, and it's a brand new day. It's a brand new opportunity, brand new hope. It just feels like... Yeah, you've already, you've struggled enough, Spirit saying, you've suffered enough, you've been through this darkness, um, you know, with your mental health, with spiritual awakening also, okay, so maybe you're getting out, you, you're already like in this dark night of the soul type of place, but now you're transitioning out of it into something that's a little bit um, happier and just feels better. Yeah, and there's fulfillment there and you're there's something that you want out of this that you're getting. If and if what you want is simply just to feel better or for the nightmares to stop or for, you know, whatever it is to stop, then that's what you're getting. Let's get more info on this third prediction. Supportive. Oh, yeah, I love this. Okay, so there are supportive people around you. I do see where you could be reconnecting with um, old friends, but also Spirit is opening that door or that window of opportunity for new friends to come in. People that are more aligned with your values and your just your overall energy, your vibe. They say that your vibe attracts your tribe <laughs> and it seems like for those of you who have kind of been struggling uh, with, with friendships or have been struggling with being alone, yeah, there are good, there are good supportive friends and good supportive people coming in to help you. I, and I do just see like the existing friendships that you have, um, the people in that circle that are very supportive and trustworthy, they'll be here to help you as well. Oh, interesting. Four of Cups and the Hermit. So these supportive people, it's it's interesting, okay. Um, they're gonna be able to point out to you maybe things about yourself that you are not able to see in yourself. There's a saying, and I don't know where it comes from or who said it, but a friend once uh, actually said it to me. He said, you know what, Sienna, you can't see the paint peeling when you're inside of the house. It was in reference to a, a problem I was having at the time that I didn't understand, a, a bad situation I was in, that I wasn't seeing it for what it was, but this friend was seeing it for what it was. And I'm like, well, how can you say that? Like, I, you'd think I'm in the situation. You'd think I would know. And he said to me, that's when he said, well, you can't see the paint peeling when you're inside the house. So these friends are going to be able to maybe point out to you what you're missing. And in a way, they could be able to spirits giving me the words like hold up a mirror to you to see a side of yourself that you were not previously aware of, but will help you uh, like with give you some kind of wisdom that you need in order to go forward with your spiritual awakening or your your healing journey. So I love seeing that your mental health is getting better. It's going to this healing that you're going through it's it's going to it's going to work this time. I'm getting that from spirit. It's going to work this time. I'm hearing something about for real this time. Maybe you had some false starts where you thought, oh, I'm getting better. And then you faced something that was difficult and you kind of retreated back and just was like, nope, no, 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 we're not, we're not going back into that. We're not opening that can of worms again. And spirit's like, ah, now you are going to open that can of worms and it is going to be okay because now you have like friends that are supporting you, resources supporting you. You're going to have this wisdom. Your higher self, I think, is going to be here, is definitely going to be here to support you and help provide you with um, insight that you need that's going to help you. And then, yeah, it just leads to this place of like satisfaction and this, this just like wish come true. I can rest. I can relax the vibe. Now, we're going to do a moonology card. Just some extra information for pile three, group three, regarding their 2025.
Don't let the past hold you back. Okay, so maybe, yeah, something, you, there could be some kind of a trauma here that you've experienced in the past that's kind of led you, maybe that's what triggered your spiritual awakening in the first place. Um, anyways, that did have an effect on the way that you've been feeling lately and Spirit's just saying like, hey, and again, when we talked about how maybe you in the past kind of with a false start thing where you you were doing the healing work and then something really big came up that you're like, uh, that I know I don't want to I don't want to touch that. I don't want to deal with that. Spirit's like, OK, but you can't. It was holding you back when you retreated back into your comfort zone, into your shell and decided not to open that can of worms. It held you back from healing and releasing. So now it's like, OK. We're not, you're not letting anything from your past keep you from releasing it, releasing that pain and keep you from uh, healing it and moving forward. This is part of your, this particular cycle or stage of spiritual awakening that you are in. And it's, it's very important. It's very difficult, but it's very important. But the good news is you have support. You have good people here. You have your higher self here. You're going to see aspects maybe of yourself or your situation that you weren't fully aware of before that information is going to help you with this really tough transition there with that six of swords now we're going to pull um let me just get it out the ask and it is given deck we're going to shuffle and pull there's printing on both sides of the cards so my agreement with spirit is that i shuffle these i don't really look while i'm shuffling i kind of i got my eyes closed so i could be like bonking my my camera thing right now as far as I, know, I don't know if I am or not but um or shaking the table or whatever um and then we just pull from the middle somewhere in the middle okay we have I'm a vibrational transmitter and receiver in every moment you're broadcasting a specific vibrational signal that's instantly being understood and answered and immediately your present and future circumstances begin changing in response to the signal you're projecting. The entire universe right now is being affected by what you are offering. So maybe in the past with this healing or whatever, you're like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. So the universe is like, okay, she's not ready or he's not ready. Okay, well, then we're going to just put this on the back burner until the next time that the opportunity, you know, till the next good opportunity for it. Now, maybe this time you're like, okay, I'm ready. Cause that's is definitely what the message is here. It is happening. You are ready, whether you feel like it or not. And now the universe is like, oh, they're ready. Okay. Well, let's bring in the supportive group of friends here. Let's bring in the insight. Let's bring on this higher self and, and her wisdom or his wisdom or whatever. All right, let's bring it. Let's do this. And then it's like your healing, you know, jump starts and you make more progress in 2025 than you have in previous years with your mental health or with your spiritual awakening or whatever it is. Now, surprise, we're doing runes, uh, volume warning. These are loud when I mix them around. So headphone users, RIP. What do we have for runes for group three? We got three of them. I think that's the most that's come out compared to the other groups. So we're gonna look at our first one here. Okay, and that's our Uru's rune. That's the letter U. So that could be a significant maybe letter uh, for you or something that stands, or you know, U maybe stands for something that's significant for you. Anyway, this is about strength, good health, power, and healing. Um, an a animal generally associated with this is like the bison or the wild bull. Um, yeah, okay. So you're much more, you're, you're, you've always been, but you're realizing now coming in 2025 that you are much more powerful than your circumstances. And you as a spiritual being having a human experience are much more powerful than what has happened to you in the past or what other people did to you in the past. And this is what's going to help your healing because you realize you are strong enough 
to face these things head on now, whereas in the past, maybe you didn't want to or weren't even aware, uh, you know, consciously. But now you're like, okay, well, you know what? I'm ready for healing. I'm going to face this head on. I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to just brute force my way through it. And it's like, yeah, this, that's okay to do. Something, I'm seeing something about like breaking down the boundaries. I'm seeing something about like a bulldozer. And it's not you, you know, disregarding people's boundaries and stuff, but it's you bulldozing, maybe bringing down the protective walls. Maybe you had around like your heart or, you know, around your expressing yourself. Um, and now it's like, no, 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 we're, we're done with that. We're going to clear this out. We're going to clear these old coping mechanisms, these old behaviors out. We're going to pave the way for something else. And I, I love that that's what's going to really help with your healing as well. And then our next rune is uh, Perthro. And that's the letter P. So letter P, that could be something significant to you. Could be someone's name or, you know, just something. Um, or P could stand for something that's significant for you. Uh, often, you know, refers to like a, a cup or a container. Um, change, hidden information, truth, secrets. So, and it's funny that the way this kind of landed, it's on <laughs> one of these cup cards. So cup, truth, hidden information, secrets. Okay. Mm. So you're letting your, I think there's something about letting your emotional cup overflow. Hidden information, secrets, truth. Um, now we did see before where you were maybe letting go of the mask that we had talked about in that first prediction and and maybe being more your authentic self your your true self you're finally being honest with yourself about something like okay you know what this is the way that I am I'm not going to fake that I'm anything other than what I am I'm not going to let people love me or their perception of me for what I'm not I would rather I would rather just be me and you know other people can take it or leave it it's going to take time but you will eventually have that uh, mindset change that perspective change our final rune is the menaz rune letter m so you, uh, I think that was letter P. I literally just did that rune and I can't remember. Yeah, it was, yeah. U, P, and M. Those could, you know, be significant letters to you. Minas rune, humanity, or, you know, um, people, mankind. Self-awareness or knowledge or collective consciousness. So yeah, I think this does have a lot to do with your spiritual awakening. You know, you're, you're awakening more to truths about yourself. And then it's going to sort of open up that, that door to um, maybe waking up to more truths about our world or truths about our universe or truths about the reality that we're living in or the reality that you are currently living in. And it's all meant to be good for you. It's all meant to further that spiritual growth and that personal development and healing. So these are fantastic messages uh, for you, group three. That is what I have for you. Private readings are open if you wanted to look into this in greater detail or in a more personalized way. Uh, so the link will be in the description, but it is calendly.com slash wildrosetc. And uh, yeah, you know what, with that, that's all the messages I've got for you. I really hope that this was helpful. I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and for your support through the likes, comments, shares, and just general interaction on these posts and on these videos. So I'm gonna leave you with that. Have a fantastic rest of your day, week, whatever, <laughs> from when you're watching this. And I will see you in the next video.